it's already on. Um, if you have another secret, come right on up, and we'll chat. <laughs> Thank you, Tommy. That's very funny. Glad you're here this morning. It's a beautiful day to be in God's house, and we're glad that you have chosen to be here. Um, it's always wonderful to greet friends. That's, that's the thing that I have missed the most about this pandemic, and you'll notice that I don't stand at the back anymore because I don't want to put you in an awkward position of saying, gosh, I don't want to shake his hand, but he's standing there, and I'll bump fist with him, but I miss the most just greeting you and telling you hello. So I may start that. I'll just keep my hands in my pocket so that you, we won't shake hands, but I can just say hello. It's, it's good to see you because it's always good to see you here as we come together in the house of the Lord. Thank you for being here. If you look in your, um, in your bulletin, you'll notice that our our Thanksgiving basket materials are due by the 13th of November, and uh, there's a big box out there that is appropriately decorated, so you'll know where to put the things and um, that you bring. And so, if you will, if you will bring that, this has been an unusual year, uh, 2020, and so there are those that um, are in desperate need of of the food. So, if you will, if you will bring those, you will be blessed, and so will those who receive it. You know, oftentimes we have people in our congregation, they're in the hospital and they're out of the hospital and we never know anything about it. I would rather have four calls that let me know that someone is in the hospital or has uh, experienced some sort of um, uh, loss or whatever than to not have it at all. Please call the church office and speak to Denisa and give her the message. If I happen not to be here, it's because we want to know and want to keep up, particularly when communication and our uh, fellowship times are limited because of this uh, uh, virus, just call the church office and let us know so that we'll know what is going on within our church family. And let me remind you that if you are part of the Holden Beach community and you have become a part of the Holden Beach Chapel, there are membership forms in the vestibule or in the narthex there that you can fill out. You do not have to give up your membership at your home church, wherever that is, to be a member here at the chapel. But we always welcome those who become, um, have a vested interest as they become members here, and we'd like to invite you to do that. We are delighted that you are all here today, and now I will ask you, if, we, if you would please, to center your thoughts as we go to the Lord in prayer. We've come here today, Lord, from different places, different needs, but we pray that when we leave this place today, after this hour of worship, that we would not be the same as we were when we came. We ask this morning that you would use this time to shape us and to mold us after the pattern that we have been given in Jesus Christ. We know, Lord, that he prayed without ceasing and that he finished the task to which he was called. And we pray that you would give us the faith and give us the courage to do the same. Amen. Good morning. Our scripture this morning is taken from Psalm 96, 1 through 9, and I'm reading from the King James Version. O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord. Bless his name. 
show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Given to the Lord, O ye kindreds of the people. Given to the Lord glory and strength. Given to the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, thank you so much for the compassionate blessings you give us each day. More blessings than we deserve. And Father, may we not take these blessings for granted, but be ever grateful. Father, I pray that you will guide us during this terrible coronavirus, which is affecting everyone not just in our nation, but all over the world. Help us to be kind to each other, especially now, Father. May we live each day for you, and may we give you the praise and the glory you deserve. Father, hear our prayers and watch over us each day according to your will. We pray as you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Praise the Lord, ye heavens adore him, says the psalmist. We would also say the same thing as we stand and sing together.
Lord, here is the time in our service when we give to you our monetary offerings. We count it only as seed to be planted in your service. May there be sufficient seed to bring forth a good harvest as it is planted in your purposes. And may it produce fruit fit for your kingdom. Amen.
Thank you, Mary and Jane. <clears throat> if you've never played handbells, let me tell you, that is incredibly hard. Do that Shelley reading with two, two bells in, in one hand. Um, it's hard enough with one bell in one hand, but with two, you just um, quadruple your chances of playing the wrong note. Excellent. Thank you very much. We are happy today <clears throat> to have Michael Simmons in, in, um, our, as our guest minister. He's been here for so many years that it's almost like you're not a guest anymore. He's like part of the family. We're glad to have you. He has served in various churches in North Carolina, uh, from Raleigh over to Bowie's Creek at um, uh, uh, the church there at, at Campbell University. But he is retired now, and uh, by retired, that means he only um, preaches um, about half the time that he used to for a third of the salary. So... Um, <laughs> Well, we're glad that you could fit us into your schedule, Michael. It's always a pleasure to have you. Welcome you and Sandra to, uh, to our church today. God bless you. Reggie, thank you so much. Uh, we have been coming since 1995, and so that's a few years. But we have enjoyed tremendously each time that we have had the opportunity to come. We remember back when the sanctuary was over there, and the minister's quarters were, were the choir room. And uh, then we remember the addition here and all the work that was done and has been done through the years. The beautiful music provided every Sunday by the choir, by the handbells this morning. Thank you, ladies, so much for the handbells and for the uh, piano accompaniment with that. Uh, we remember uh, so many things about the chapel and how it's changed through the years. The beautiful new sanctuary. You know, the, the redact modeling that you all have done, it looks so beautiful in here. But one thing never changes, and that's God's love for his people and your dedication to your Lord. And we thank you so much for the privilege of being able to be back with you again uh, this year. And God gave us a beautiful week here at Holden Week. It has been a wonderful time to experience uh, God's grace and God's presence. And one thing that we have missed, like you, Reg, is to be able to really socialize with, with, with the congregation. But we're glad to get able to see you this morning and to share with you God's Word. I'm going to read the Scripture with you this morning, which comes from Matthew's Gospel, uh, chapter 22, beginning with verse 15. And then we'll go back and, and look at the text. Then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap him in his words. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. Teacher, they said, we know that you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the corn used for paying the tax. And he brought him a denarius and he asked them, Whose inscription is this? Whose image is this and whose inscription? Why, Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, So give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. And when they heard this, they were amazed, so they left him and went away. You know, this has been a strange year. I never remember another year like this one. Have you? Fires, earthquakes, floods, hurricanes, and then, of course, that dreaded COVID-19. The shutdown of businesses, the wearing of masks. Don't you love those things? <laughs> so I don't either. The, the mask, the social distancing. Uh, we can't hug, we can't shake hands. We just look at each other and kind of do like the Japanese, you know. We, 
we, we kind of bow to one another? Or we wave at one another? Or we shake hands at a distance with one another? It's a strange, strange world. And to top it off, 2020 is an election year. Aren't you sick and tired of all those commercials? Yes. Uh, boy, I am. Every time you turn on the TV, about half the time is t taken up by one commercial or another talking about one candidate or another. In a political year, in a year like 2020, perhaps the scripture that we're looking at this morning is more, more pertinent than ever before. I want you to look at that scripture with me, and then we'll go on a little further into uh, Matthew's gospel to look at the total message, message called the rendering. Now, there are two groups mentioned here. They're the Pharisees. And the Herodians, uh, they're strange bedfellows. They don't really get along with one another, but they kind of live out that old saying that uh, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. You see, the Pharisees was a sect that believed in following the Mosaic law right down the line. And to make sure that they did that, they wrote and passed many other laws to interpret the law. Made it kind of difficult for anybody to really live up to any of it. But the Pharisees tried. And the Pharisees did not like the Romans. They were a party that really stressed Judaism and Israel as a nation. And then there's the Herodians. These were supporters of King Herod, who was placed on the throne by Caesar. And so the Herodians kind of didn't mind the Roman rule because the Romans allowed Herod to be on the throne. These two groups really didn't see the same political ideology at all. And yet here they come together because they had share a common enemy, and that enemy is Jesus. Now look at the way they approach Jesus. They begin to talk to, to him about all the great things they could think of, of about him. A man of integrity, one who teaches the way of God in accordance with the truth. One who's swayed, not swayed by others because he really doesn't care what others think. He speaks the truth. Now, if you weren't Jesus and you heard that kind of flattery being said about you, you might, might have a tendency to get the big head a little bit. But not Jesus. He knew what these guys were up to when they asked him that question. Tell us, teacher. What is your opinion? Is it lawful? Is it right for us to give taxes to Caesar? Pay taxes? Should we do that? Now, there were three taxes that Rome put upon the people. There was a, a grain tax, there was a land tax, and there was the income tax, the imperial tax. The imperial tax was the greater of the three, and the imperial tax was at least a denarius and then some. Perhaps that's the reason Jesus asked for a denarius. It's more than a day's wage. Show me the coin, Jesus said. Now, whose image is on it? Why Caesar's image? Whose inscription is on it? It's Caesar's inscription. All right. Give to Caesar what he's due and give to God what he is due. Render as you should render to Caesar, but render to God what you need to render to God. They went away. Amazed at his answer because they had hoped to trap him in his words. If he had said, no, don't pay your taxes. We don't want to give Rome any money. He would have been arrested for treason against Rome. If he had said, pay your taxes, the Pharisees would have been upset with him. And so would most of Israel because they hated paying their taxes. Jesus knew it was a trap. 
You see, trap your opponent in his own words. Boy, if you believe all the political commercials that are on TV, uh, words taken out of context, you wouldn't want to vote for any of the candidates. Because they use their own words against them. In the scripture this morning, Jesus says, yes, as a people, we do render to Caesar, to government, that which is due to government. For government provides some wonderful things for us. They provide protection for us and security. They supply, uh, supply a lot of the services that we cannot supply for ourselves, but uh, are very necessary for our day-to-day -day living. We pay our taxes. Some of us, like uh, Reg, and, and when I, I was full-time in ministry, Reggie, that quarterly payment to the government as self-employed ministers, and that's what government considers us, self-employed. We pay our taxes. Others, April 15th, you know the day, it's ingrained in your memory, and you know you got to pay the taxes. We owe those taxes, but we owe something greater than taxes to our government. The Apostle Paul in 1 Timothy chapter 2 tells us that we are to pray for those in authority over us. We owe our leaders in this nation, regardless of which political persuasion they have to be, our prayers. We are to pray for God to give them wisdom that they might govern righteously. We need to pray that God will give to them ears that will hear his voice when he speaks so that decisions that are made will be in keeping with his teaching and, and his will. As Paul says, we are to pray for them. And in Romans chapter 13, he reminds us that God has placed them there. Have you ever thought of that? God has placed leaders in position of leadership. Sometimes for our good and sometimes for punishment, but God places them there to deal with us and lead us in the direction he would take us to go if we would, would but listen. We render to Caesar that which is Caesar. We pray for those in leadership in this country. Regardless of whether we agree with them or not, we pray for them. We owe that to our Caesars, to our government, to those who lead. But more importantly than what we owe to our government is what we owe to our Lord. Render unto God the things that are God's. Now what belongs to God? What is the greatest thing that God expects of us? Later on in that same chapter in Matthew's Gospel, we have not the Pharisees coming to Jesus, but the Sadducees, another political sect of Judaism. And they come together and they say to Jesus, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All of the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. What are we to render to God? If we take the words and teachings of Jesus seriously, which I hope that we do, we begin to understand that we owe everything to God. We are to love Him with all that we are. To love Him with all of our heart, our feelings, our emotions. You know, it's one thing to say that I love you. It's another thing 
to go beyond the words and have the feelings deep within. To love with all that we are, all of our passion. To love the Lord our God with all of our heart is to love Him as He loves us. And if we think about how our God loves us, we remember the cross. We remember the sacrifice of Jesus. We remember the extent to which God went in order that your sin and mine might be removed and we might be deemed worthy to enter into God's presence. We are to love God with all of our heart. Emotionally, with feelings, we love God. Uh, You know, we sang the hymns a while ago. Uh, When I sing hymns, I love to see the expression on the faces of God's people. It's so hard to do that in mask. But hopefully the expression even under the mask are those of genuine feelings of love for the God who created us and gave his son for us. We are to love the Lord our God with all of our soul. That's all of our innermost being. With everything that we are to love God. There's nothing more important and nothing more significant in our lives than is the presence of God in our feelings of love for Him. To love God with all of our soul. All that is within us. As the psalmist said, and as was read earlier, to bless his holy name. To praise him. We are to love the Lord our God with all of our mind. Our thoughts are to be upon him. His ways are higher than our ways and we should seek his ways. We should seek his face. Our thoughts need to be heaven-centered God-centered, to remember what God has done and is doing for us each and every day, to love God with our thinking, with our minds. And so we stop to think for a moment. In this strange year in which we find ourselves Are we concentrating on the feelings and experiencing the presence of God? Are we really reaching out to Him with everything that is within us? Are we really thinking about Him and desiring to please Him in what we say and and what we do? Jesus said, yes, this is the greatest commandment, but there's another one. The second commandment that is like unto the first, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love your neighbor. You see, in the Ten Commandments, there, yes, there are ten, six of them deal with our relationship with one another. Only four of them deal with our relationship with God. If our relationship with God is right, then we should have a good relationship with one another. You see, the way in which we relate to each other really demonstrates our love for God. You know, Scripture teaches how can we love God whom we have not seen when we cannot love our brother who we see every day. And then I think of the political ads. And I think of the division that exists in this country. And I think about the lack of love that seems to exist brother to brother. It doesn't matter at this point which side of a political aisle you happen to be on. 
What does matter is do you love your brother across the aisle, your sister across the aisle? Can we love each other regardless of what our political views happen to be? Can we love each other and seek the best for each other regardless? Because God has made each of us in his own image. He sent his son to die for each of us. And he has given his Holy Spirit to each of us who has opened himself or herself up to the presence of the Holy Spirit coming to reside within them. This is a day in which the church has perhaps one of its most important times in history to demonstrate the love of Christ for a lost world and a love of Christ for all people. It was only in ancient Antioch that the people of the way, as those early Christians were called, were first called Christians. Why? Because the people of Antioch said, see how they love each other. The second commandment, likened to the first. Our relationship with each other and the way that we will pray for each other and the way in which we will reach out to each other will demonstrate to a world what it means to have the spirit and presence of Christ within us. This is the high calling of the church. The world won't understand. Don't expect them to. Non-believers won't understand. They'll criticize you for loving somebody who may not love you back. But God understands. And the way that we change our world in 2020 is not just at a ballot box. It's on our knees before Almighty God who has called us to love him with all of our heart and all of our soul and all of our mind and to express that love for him as we love each other. Church, listen to me. You and I have a wonderful opportunity to change this world of ours. It starts with each one of us in our hearts. And it continues with each one of us on our knees. And it will make a difference when we show the world what it means to love our brother and our sister. Yeah, we render to Caesar what, that which is Caesar. We have to. We go to jail. You know, we have no choice. We render to government what's required. The IRS will see to that. But we must render to God that which belongs to God. And that's all that we are. And all that we have. And we demonstrate that love as we reach out to one another and seek the peace of God for each one. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we come together as your people. We come together in urgent prayer for this nation. We come together in urgent and earnest prayer for the church and for ourselves. It's so easy, Father, to talk about loving you with heart and soul and mind. But it's a little different when we really think about what that means. Loving you and feeling inwardly that love and that desire to, to please you always to please you 
and to praise you, to love you. Not just words, Father, but feelings and commitment. And then we think about loving each other. We confess, Father, some people are hard to love. And there are times, I suspect, when we're pretty hard to love ourselves. And yet you have commanded us, not just ask us, but commanded us to love each other. And so, oh Lord, help us as a church to begin that process within us and as a Christian family in this nation and around the world to understand it doesn't matter what the race happens to be or the political persuasion happens to be or the language happens to be or the economic status happens to be it only matters that we can look at one another through your eyes and realize that each one of us is created in your image and likeness and that our Lord Jesus came for each and every one of us when he gave himself on the cross for us. And so, Lord, help us to search our own hearts today and to determine within our own minds and hearts that we will love you and we will let that, let that love within us grow more and more and that we will express that love for you as we reach out to one another in peace and in love. Oh God, help us to commit ourselves today to the task of being what you've called us to be, to love you with all of our innermost being and to serve you with all that we have and all that we are. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We have a closing hymn to sing this morning. I always look at the closing hymn as a, as a way of expressing our love for God, a time of personal reflection, and a time of saying to the Lord, this is who I am and this is what I want to be and recommitting ourselves anew to what God has called us to be for him. So as we sing the words, let the meaning speak to us and let us ask the Lord to teach us that we might serve him faithfully.
for giving us this time to share with you and for your being here this morning, for the wonderful opportunity just to be with God's people in this beautiful place. Thank you. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore through Jesus Christ who empowers you. In his name we pray and go forth. Amen.